Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Wednesday, June the 3rd. We are into the summer. I am Jen Bordeaux, and this is Family Law Uncorked with New Direction Family Law. Um, today, I am joined by Jeff Marsacci with the law offices of Jeffrey G. Marsacci, and we are going to be talking about estate planning, um, in particular, the five big documents that are very important for everyone to have, why those are important, um, you know, Obviously, talking about planning for, you know, your end of life is not something that people really want to talk about, but it's necessary because it is, it is one of the few guarantees in this life of what's going to happen. Um, so it's important that you have that, that plan ahead of time and those documents to help take guesswork out of things and make sure that your wishes are being honored um, when you are not there to honor them yourself. So um, with that, you know, right now in, in the world with, with COVID and everything going on and um, life is life is fragile and it is that is in our faces and you know everyone is recognizing that if, if you, you we kind of numb out to it sometimes but you can't ignore that right now and um and so it is all the more important to have conversations like this and talk about how to protect ourselves um in, in that regard so with that jeff i would love to turn it over to you first of all so thank you so much for joining me today and sharing your insight about these documents um, because I think, you know, people don't know if they don't know. So, yeah, um, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. If you'll just start off with telling viewers and speaking of for those that are watching now or later, if you have questions while we're chatting or after the fact, because this will live on our Facebook page, page of course, please feel free to reach out with those questions. We'll do our best to get them answered, if not live, um, definitely as a follow up. So, um, Jeff, if you'll just start out just introducing yourself and a little bit about your firm and how you help people. Okay. Well, I'm Jeff Marsacci. I'm an estate planning attorney. I also do Medicaid planning. Uh, overall, I've been doing this for 24 years now, which doesn't seem possible that it's been that long. Uh, but I ended up really kind of getting into this field while I was still in law school. Uh, unfortunately, my grandfather passed on about two weeks before I was set to go to law school. And my grandmother ended up asking me questions on about every week or every other week about what was going on with the estate. And it turned out they didn't really have the documents in place the way they needed to be done. So I ended up getting a firsthand experience of the planning not being done the right way or being done incompletely. And I was looking into cases where things weren't done at all and how it just really left the family in limbo. And this always stuck with me when I started my practice and opened everything up. My grandmother kept saying, I don't really feel like my house is my own because all of this stuff is still up in the air. Mm. So having those documents in place can head off potential problems quite a bit. So that's the reason I really kind of got into this field is I like to help people plan ahead so that these things don't pop up down the road. Yeah, I mean, which I think is great. I know um, my when my grandfather passed away, I think that he had he had a will, but it was pretty generic in general. And so it honestly didn't help a whole lot. You know what I mean? So I think that 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 yeah. goes into really, you know, understanding what you can put in that document and, and how things can work, what you can direct and, and, and things like that. In those instances, because it's still, even though there was that document, it kind of just left everything up to my mom and her two sisters. And so given the emotion awareness, and they're very close, my mom and my aunts are very close, but still given the emotional um, heightness of, of what was going on and just losing their father, um, you know, it still adds another level of complexity and stress to to dealing with all of that along with the grief process. So definitely very important. And um, so thank you for the work that you do, because, you know, in family law, it's a very emotionally driven area of law for us. Yeah. Um, and, and you're just another avenue of law that, you know, has a lot of emotions tied into it. So um, yeah. preparation is, is definitely key. So with that being said, um, you, you've shared, um, we're going to talk about the big five documents that you really mm -hmm. need and how all this estate planning, there can be peace of mind around. And I think kind of your tagline is peace of mind estate planning. 
and how it doesn't have to be super stressful. So let's just kick it off with talking about these documents, um, you know, briefly to a certain extent, because people will kind of glaze yeah. over, you know, but what these five <laughs> documents are, and I'm going to type them in the comments, just what they are um, as you're talking so that people can have that as a reference um, to, to look back to. So with that, take it away. Okay. Well, the first of the big five documents is the last will and testament, which we've talked a little bit about here in introducing things. That's the legal document that spells out, here's what I want to have happen with my stuff after I've passed on. And in some cases, I also see certain uh, wishes regarding burial versus cremation, what kind of services. And the biggest things that the will does is it names an executor, the person or persons you want to be in charge of making sure that everything happens. The second thing is who are the beneficiaries? What do they get? When do they get it? Maybe even how do they get it? And in particular, when you're talking about potentially younger beneficiaries, there can be some age limits and other things that are set up to make sure they don't get the money too early. I sometimes see in the will guardianship provisions if there are minor children. Uh, this is probably more a matter of style. That's actually the bonus document, the sixth one that I'll get to, where we put an appointment of guardian form if you have minor children or if there's uh, an adult special needs beneficiary or that you're the guardian of to nominate someone to take over that type of guardianship. But those are the big things that we typically see in the last will and testament, right? Okay. The, the second big document is not for after death, it's while you're alive, uh, it's the durable general power of attorney. This is where someone can step in and handle anything financial or legal on your behalf. And there are different ways of enacting it. So potentially it's active now while you're fine and competent, or it can come into effect and give people that power and authority if you become incapacitated. The scenario I usually give to my clients is, well, what happens if we put this plan together and everything's fine, but you leave the office after signing all your documents and now you're in a car accident and you're in a coma for three months? the person you've named as your durable general power of attorney should be able to grab the checkbook, pay your bills, move money around, apply for benefits, and basically run your life if you become incapacitated. Uh, one big myth that I see around this power of attorney is, oh, well, if I pass on, then the person who's my power of attorney can just go ahead and handle everything. No, the power of attorney ends when your life ends, and that's when the executor of the will takes over. So I think with, with the general power of attorney, and, and please feel free to add to this or correct me if I, if I misspeak, but I mean, I had an, an instance, um, a couple instances actually, of friends that um, their children went off to college, and mm -hmm. now they, were, they turned 18, and then they came home, and they were very ill, you know, um, yeah. it, for whatever reason, you know, all have they recuperated, you know, and they're fine, but they, um, it, but their, the parents were so frustrated because they couldn't make decisions on behalf of their child. And so that's right. when they brought up the idea of, Hey, it's super important, you know, in that scenario, when if you've got a kid off the college that maybe you discuss and get a general power of attorney to help with those kind of decisions. Yeah. And that actually kind of leads a little bit into the third document, the healthcare power of attorney. Perfect. <laughs> it's not, yeah, it's not usually when we're talking about the kids going off to college that it's the durable power of attorney where they see, oh my gosh, there's a need. It's when the parents are trying to get the medical records from the pediatrician to send on to the college. Mm. And suddenly the doctor's office they've been dealing with for the last 18 years says, I'm sorry, I can't talk to you anymore. Yep. What do you mean? Well, yeah, your child parent. is now 18. <laughs> so they're a legal adult. They have to approve this. So usually it's this time of the year or even a little bit earlier that my clients start calling me and saying, I'm running into this problem. And typically we'll put together at least 
the durable general power of attorney and the healthcare power of attorney to help out. That's when the kids are actually adults. They're naming one of their parents and usually the other one is second uh, in, in that. So, but the healthcare power of attorney puts someone in charge of making all of those healthcare decisions for you if you can't. So they're stepping in, they're able to handle things for you or even if you can make your own decisions, like in the case of the college student, it's still gonna let them gather information and get things done for you. So that's the first three. The second two, there's the nomination of conservator form. Uh, that's who would be a guardian for you if you ever ended up being incapacitated for such a long period of time that somebody felt they had to petition a court to assign a guardian to you. And now that person would be reporting to the court, justifying all the expenses, justifying the personal decisions, just to make sure that no one's abusing their authority. Typically, healthcare power of attorney, durable general power of attorney, that's going to empower someone to make those decisions. But if it ever got to the point where someone said, we're going to court because we want a guardian assigned, you've named the people that you want to handle those things. And do you, re do you mind repeating the name of that document again, just so I can put it in the comments here for viewers? Right. I, it's the nomination of conservator. Now, let, I, I tell this to my clients all the time. Really, in North Carolina, there's very, very little difference between an adult that needs a guardian assigned and a child that needs a guardian assigned. But when I first use the term guardian with my clients, they're immediately thinking kids under 18. So I usually say it's conservator for adult, guardian for minors, and it's just a little bit easier thing. So that document is a nomination of conservator. Right? Got it, okay. And the last document, which may be one of the most important documents to have for your family is the living will. The living will is your decision regarding life support and artificial nutrition and hydration if you get to the point when the doctors are saying, there's nothing else we can do. We don't think they're coming back. So I've had clients in the past. It's a very difficult emotional decision for the family to make to say, yes, take my mom or take my dad off of the life support. And I've had cl clients literally come in and say, this is the most important document we need to have because I decided to take my mother off life support and I feel like I killed my mother and that was five mm. years ago. If yeah. you put into that document, here's what I wanna have happen, it's a get out of jail from guilt card that you're giving to people. If you don't have the living will, but you do have the health care power of attorney, you're kind of putting that decision on them. Now, the sixth document- That's a document, big decision. That, that's a it, heavy decision to make without a, a, a clear directive from the, that person's wishes. So I can right. easily see how people might say that's the most important one because I mean, there's a lot of controversy around that between people. Yeah. Um, there's been movies made about it. And so there's all kinds of literature out there um, about that as far as, you know, hanging on as long as you can or, you know, possibility of living in a vegetative state. So, um, yeah. yeah. So removing that stress from someone is, I can see how that's a big deal. <laughs> right. And in addition to the stress, what if the other family members don't agree with the healthcare agent's decisions? Yeah. Now- a wedge, a huge wedge between, you know, family. So yeah, right. great point, great point. So what's this bonus document? <laughs> the bonus document, that's the appointment of guardian form. And that's typically if you have minor children or adult children uh, with special needs, and they need to have a guardian to take over because you are their legal guardian, this is where we can list the people that you want to take over that position. 
So one of the things that I talk about with all of these different documents, uh, sometimes I have my clients really struggle to try to find, I call it Superman or Superwoman, someone who could make the healthcare decisions. They're gonna do all the financial things and they can raise my child if anything. People have different skill sets and you trust different people with different things. Sure. So coming up with a list of people who can handle financial things, that's gonna be your executor of the will, the durable general power of attorney agent. Uh, they would be the conservator of your estate in the nomination of conservator form. But then the people who you would trust to make healthcare decisions, that's in your healthcare power of attorney, that's your conservator of the person. And if you have minor children, or again, adult children with special needs who need a guardian, these are the people who would physically raise your children or take care of them. They don't have to be the same people in that list. It can definitely be different people. Uh, and that usually helps out quite a bit as they're thinking through things. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I, I think this is great. I mean, this is this breaks it down because, you know, even being in the legal industry, I've heard of pretty much all, I'm not gonna say all, mm -hmm. <laughs> the nomination of conservator, that one I probably hadn't heard of before, but otherwise I've heard of all of these other documents. Um, but sometimes they, they're used, you know, intertwined with people that, you know, they're, they're, I guess, misnamed, so to speak, you know, they kind of think that a will is the same thing as a power of attorney. Um, so I love the clarification and breaking down into, because I know your other, your other shtick is plain English attorney. And I am the plain English attorney. <laughs> clearly evident here, which I love because legal jargon can be a lot. It's antiquated yeah. and it's a, you know, it's a whole other language in itself. So I think that is great. Um, so we were just talking right before we went live about um, an offer that you guys have been running for a little while regarding, you know, the big five documents. So can you tell us about that? Right. Yeah. Through the end of July, 2020, we extended it uh, to get all five of those documents or the sixth one, if you need it, it's $400 for an individual or $700 for a couple. Uh, if they're using the process that we put out, which is pretty simple. We're going to send you a questionnaire and an engagement agreement, fill that out and get it back to us. Um, we'll have a half hour phone call or a Zoom session where I'll go over the key points. Who do you want making these decisions? Who's the backup person? Who's the backup to the backup person? Um, and answer any questions. We'll put the documents together and send you the drafts to take a look at. And we can answer any questions and then come in, sign it, and you're done. We keep this as easy as possible. We do an awful lot more complex planning. We do a lot of stuff with revocable living trusts. And if you think that gets complicated, we also do Medicaid planning with irrevocable trusts. That's, that's a lot of stuff. What we're finding in this time in particular with COVID-19 and all the other restrictions, people are realizing they need to do something, but they don't want to dig into some of these more complicated things. So at least getting this in place, make sure that you're covered and gives you at least a little peace of mind. And then once things hopefully return to a little bit more normal, if you want to look into those other things, then we can do it. And now just from, from our perspective, because I know speaking in the family law world, um, because I know the attorneys at New Direction, they, you know, they, they'll talk to every, every person who's either, you know, consultation or once they become a client, what, whatever stage it kind of falls into the conversation, they talk about a will. You know, mm -hmm. if you have a will, you need to look at updating it, you know, if going through a divorce, um, or if you don't have a will, you need to really visit, especially where children are concerned. Um, so let's say someone does have a will and they need to amend that will or, or update it. Um, is that an easy process? I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that's something you can help people with as well. Well, yeah. And it's, it's generally fitting into the same process to get these, these documents done. If you have a will that's outdated, because of something like a divorce, then chances are your power of attorney also needs to be changed as well as the healthcare power of attorney because you probably named that spouse or former spouse 
in those documents as well. And so we look, let's just redo everything. Yeah. Now, what I can tell you is on average, people will make changes either to the people, to the beneficiaries, age limits for younger beneficiaries, typically about every five to seven years, there's something that needs to be changed enough that it just needs to be updated. And certainly with a life event like that, yes, they're gonna need to make changes. Yeah, yeah, definitely good to know. Well, Jeff, thank you so much for joining me today. I've definitely learned something, so I'm sure My that pleasure. everyone else has too. Um, and if, um, you know, I think obviously a, a public health crisis or pandemic is not necessarily a normal circumstance, but if we're going to find, you know, we, we're trying to find silver linings in it all. And it does help us think about these things um, and face conversations that maybe we wouldn't normally be having with ourselves or our family members to make these decisions that maybe aren't fun to address, but are absolutely necessary. So um, if people are interested and would like to get in contact with you, what is the mm -hmm. best way for them to reach you? Well, our phone number is 919-844-7993, or they can check us out on the web at livingtrustlawfirm.com. Again, livingtrustlawfirm.com. And email, it's Jeff, J-E-F-F, -F, <laughs> at livingtrustlawfirm.com. There you go. And then you have, because um, I know we have a YouTube channel as well, and this video will be uploaded to YouTube um, here shortly. I can't promise today, but definitely tomorrow. Um, so you have a YouTube channel as well with information correct. up there, correct? Correct. Awesome. And what is the the YouTube? Is it? It's, well, youtube.com slash NC Lawyer. NC Lawyer. Go. Awesome. Um, well, Jeff, again, thank you so much for any of those that watch this now or later. Um, please don't hesitate to reach out to Jeff and to ask any questions that you have surrounding us or you can get in contact with us and we will get you in contact with Jeff. Of course, any family law related questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us at North New Direction Family Law. We will make sure that you are taken care of. So um, again, Jeff, thank you so much for joining me today for another segment of Family Law Uncorked and um, helping educate our viewers. So have a wonderful afternoon. For those thank watching, you. tune in on Friday. We'll be talking about um, what to expect during, during an initial consultation with uh, the founding partner of the firm, Elizabeth Stevenson. So again, Jeff, thank you so much. And thank we'll you. see you next time. Bye.